Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for making us your saints. In Jesus' name, amen. You're probably tired of me telling you that Frederick Buechner is one of my favorite authors. I guess I keep saying it, hoping you might pick up one of his books like The Alphabet of Grace or Theological ABCs or if you're really wanting something deep, you go with Godric. Anyway, on the subject of All Saints Day, this is what he said. To be a saint is to be human because we were created to be human. To be a saint is to live with courage and self-restraint, as the alcoholic priest says. But it is more than that. To be a saint is to live not with hands clenched, to grasp, to strike, to hold tight to a life that is always slipping away the more tightly we hold it. But it is to live with a hand stretched out both to give and receive with gladness. To be a saint is to work and weep for the broken and suffering of the world. But it is also to be strangely light of heart in the knowledge that there is something greater than the world that mends and renews. Maybe more than anything else, to be a saint is to know joy. As saints, the reason we live with courage and self-restraint and hold our hands open and work and weep for the broken and the suffering is not just because we know there is something waiting for us after this life is over, but who it is that is waiting for us when this life is over and we get to go to our real home. And of course, the one who is waiting for us is also the one who made it possible for us to see beyond this life and all of the troubles and and more importantly, who made heaven possible through his sacrificial gift of his son, Jesus. Because the definition of heaven, by the way, isn't a place, a thing, or gold streets, or angels, or harps. It's to be in the presence of the one who loves us more than life itself. The world, despite our occasional outburst about a particular food or amazing moment in time or idyllic scene being heavenly, is anything but. Uh, This world is filled with things that knock the breath out of us, knock us flat on our back, and it does its best to keep us from getting back up again. And it's always way too easy to let those things paralyze us. Do you know who St. Demphna is? I preached about her and a bunch of other saints last year, and I did a little more research on her. She is the patron saint of the anxious and the mentally ill in the Catholic community. Lutherans may not have patron saints, but reading about those who have been sainted and the how and the why, they are always powerful and inspirational stories. In Demphna's case, she was born in Ireland in the 7th century. Her mother was a faithful Catholic. Her father, a pagan king. Now, before you dreamily imagine beautiful castles and pretty dresses and royal dinners like uh, she was the princess of Disney, her mother died when she was very young, and she had to flee from her abusive father. When she landed in Giel, Belgium, she built a home for people who were mentally ill or paralyzed by anxiety and worry. Her father tracked her down, demanded that she return with him to Ireland and become his queen. She refused. He pulled out his sword and cut her head off on the spot. This is the problem with becoming a saint. It often means you lived a life that was so different, so set apart, that those who do not know Jesus and are not yet of his kingdom do not understand you. And that often means your life ends long before it should. And yet even though you are dead, whatever you did with your life is of such value and power that it lives on even though you don't in this world. In the case of Demphna, She had such an influence on that little town that the people took over her ministry and it became a refuge for anyone who suffered from anxiety or mental health issues. In life and in death, Demphna brought peace and a calming influence to this world. I wish we had a few more people like her in this world today. We could certainly use them. Well, that brings us to the transition to All Saints Day. Today we are reminded we are not alone on our journey through life. And not only has Jesus done everything that needed to be done for us in order to get into heaven, but he left us a holy to-do list that does need to get done before we leave this world. And the to-do list isn't how we get into heaven. In other words, it, you know, by accomplishing that and ticking all the boxes, we get to go to heaven. No, that's not it at all. Rather, it's a thank you because we get to go to heaven. See how that gets reversed? It's not what we do to get to heaven. It's saying thank you because God already said we're going to heaven. God also promised we had everything we need, and we have everyone we need in order to get this to-do list done. 
A little something about saints. Part of Lutheran theology is we don't need special saints to intercede for us. We believe that God doesn't listen to the saints any more than he listens to us. They may have lived a holy life and their life may have impacted thousands or even millions of lives, but every saint has a past, just as every sinner has a future. Now, because God is God, he can hear all of us, even if we're praying at the same time. C.S. Lewis has got a wonderful excursus on that. The book of James does say the prayer of a righteous person has greater power, but since the word righteous refers to anyone who has faith in Jesus, your picture doesn't have to be on the wall of a church or a who's who to be included in one who can pray powerfully. What we are celebrating today is not just the select few who had superhuman faith, but that God, for reasons that we may not understand, chooses flawed and imperfect people like us in order to accomplish His holy will. God, at our baptism, sealed us with the Holy Spirit, marked us with the cross of Christ forever. God created faith in your heart and mind. It's His gift to us. And now, through ordinary acts of love, He uses us to bring the kingdom of heaven just a little bit closer to earth. We also celebrate the saints who have gone before us, the ones that St. Paul calls the great cloud of witnesses. And we give thanks that they left behind some very large and visible footprints for us to follow in so we don't get lost. If there's one word we might use to focus on today, it would be the word connect. We are connected. You have faith because someone who loved you connected you to Jesus. Or when you were a little child, maybe not so little, they, they brought you to a baptismal font. They stood beside you as the pastor poured water on your forehead and spoke your name and then said, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But that bit baptism would have no power if God had not sent his Son into the world to bear our sin and to be our Savior. In other words, the water of baptism, just like the wine and bread of Holy Communion, they have no power unless they're connected to Jesus. And they can't connect us to Jesus unless we know who and what Jesus is. Now, because the water only needs to flow once across our forehead, but God understands we have doubts and anxiety and such worries uh, that the further we are away from our baptism, that we might be further away from God, not only does he connect us to Jesus through baptism, but he also connects us through that holy meal of wine and bread. And he connects us through that to Jesus and his sacrifice, and he also connects us to one another. The Holy Meal binds us as a family of Christ. It empties us of our sins and fills us up with the righteousness of God, and then it sends us forth to love and forgive and to cry and to laugh in Jesus' name. Now, in a world that seems to invent new ways to be connected electronically and technologically every day, it's actually becoming easier to feel alone and lost more than any other time in history. The news pointed out 22% of adults feel lonely, even though they are surrounded by people. No matter how many friends you have on Facebook or followers on Twitter or TikTok or contacts on your cell phone, there are times when you can feel very much alone, even though you live on a planet with 8 billion people. And that is why God has set us apart, but also gathered us together in a community of faith. We gather on Sundays and other days, sometimes worshiping and praying and singing, other times We eat hot dogs and brats and, yeah, sit in a bouncy house. Or maybe, if we're brave, bounce in a bouncy house. And we realize that we are connected to this body of believers, not by our good works or our right beliefs or even our perfectly straight teeth, but because God gathers us together and keeps us together through His love. That's the connector. Today, we remember the deeply faithful and the deeply flawed people of God. They are all saints because of God's mercy and grace, not their superhuman faith or their threadbare faith. Some have names we know, Mary Magdalene, Peter, Paul, Barnabas, St. Francis, St. Patrick, St. George, the Dragon Slayer. There are those who are more contemporary, but they are saints nonetheless. Martin Luther, um, St. Mother Teresa, St. Martin Luther King Jr., and St. Billy Graham. I know what you're thinking. Don't you need to be dead in order to be a saint? Nope. Paul often started or ended his letters to the saints in Rome or Galatia or Philippi. And he obviously wasn't writing a letter to dead people. There is no doubt we give thanks for those who God has gathered unto himself and those whose beauty and faith continues to light the path we walk on. But there are also those who are alive and well today who inspire us, who love us, who forgive us, who help us be more than we ever thought was humanly possible. And yeah, 
because of their work, they are saints as well. For some of you, today may bring to mind someone you loved more than life itself. The someone maybe who brought you to the baptismal font, or who prayed with you, or helped you get your act together, or maybe, maybe who sought you out when you were being the prodigal son or daughter. And what makes this day so hard is that they aren't here anymore, and it hurts. And it brings a tear to our eyes because we would rather be standing behind them in line for communion, even though it's taking forever, or holding their hand during the prayer, or having them even lean down and tell us to stop wiggling because everybody's watching us, or maybe just to be quiet during the sermon. We would love to have that, even though at the time we complained. Paul, when he's talking to the church at Ephesus, calls what we're feeling the inheritance of the saints. God gathers us up in his divine love and makes us into the community of faith. But the community would not be the community without those who have gone before us. Nor will it be the same without those who will come after us. We, all of us, are the community of faith. And so it brings us some consolation and comfort that even the names of those who we love are eventually forgotten by this world, but they will never be forgotten by God because they are already with him now and forever standing in his glory and singing his praises. While death is a wrenching, painful reality to us in the here and now, God reminds us they are with him, and one day because of Jesus, we will all be together again. So what can we do but give thanks for one another and all the one another's who are gathered in Jesus' name over all the earth in living rooms and megachurches and basements and especially darkened rooms where they are hiding because what they're doing, worshiping God, is illegal. Our altar is only about four and a half feet by three feet. At least that's what it looks like if you look over there. However, because of Jesus, it actually encompasses the whole world because it's actually not our altar. It's inside our church, and we clean it. We change the pyramids, but it's not our altar. It's God's altar, His family table. And that is why it is able to transcend all time and all space and become a place where we celebrate His love and forgiveness through His body and blood. We gather around it to pray and to worship. We're standing beside not only one another, but also every believer in the world, and even those who are right now in heaven, and those who haven't even been born yet. As holy as the moment often is when we take the bread and the wine and the pastor says take and eat and take and drink the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it is only a foretaste, a teaser, a preview of the heavenly banquet around which the saints of God are already gathered and which we are gathered as well. It's not just the saints we are gathered with, it is also the angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, my favorite line from the communion service. It may only be a tiny wafer and a sip of wine, but through it God connects us to himself and the believers of all time and space, but he also connects us to his heavenly army and even to heaven itself. That brings us back to St. Demphna. The news will always be filled with story after story meant to scare us and trap us in a spiral of fear. It will always contain something that makes it hard to sleep at night. That was especially true this last week, but the news has always been that way. We just had a lot more barriers between us and the knowledge that we live in a very dangerous world. Today, it's kind of hard to escape because wherever we go, social media follows us. You are a saint of God, no less and no more than those saints that we mentioned a while back. That means you have been set apart by God to do the most amazing things. You have everything you need and everyone you need to accomplish this. Because it's God who gave you the, both the job, but also the resources. Here's the important point. Being safe, not an option. Not in our world, not today, not any day. The reason we call them saints is not because they were holier than anybody else, but because they stepped out in faith and they lived a life of boldness and courage, even when it wasn't safe to do so. Our calling is to be just as bold and just as courageous and just as faithful. At the end of this life, no matter when it comes, we should be able to lay our heads down knowing our life was worth living. And any regrets we had were not about not eating enough ice cream or going for walks with the ones we love. And never ever about not living for Jesus. Because we're never going to be perfect. We're never going to do everything we wanted to. We're never going to get it all right. Which is why there is grace. 
This world, despite our occasional outburst about a particular food or amazing moment in time or idyllic scene being heavenly, it's anything but heavenly. This world is filled with things that knock the breath out of us, knock us flat on our back, and tries its best to keep us from getting back up again. And it is way too easy to let such things paralyze us. If nothing else, like St. Demphna, we, maybe we could bring a little calm and peace to an otherwise crazy world. It seems like such a little thing, but it's not. Just ask the people who have been impacted by a saint of God, including a bunch of the ones that we'll never know about until we get to heaven. Because suddenly, suddenly it was like someone turned the light on for them in a very dark room. And that's what inspired them to want to do it for someone else. In other words, when somebody brings the light into our life, we can't wait to bring it into somebody else's life. All Saints Day is our day. It means everybody who ever did anything amazing or anyone, including us, or in the future, will overcome whatever's keeping us from doing something amazing are united at this table in communion with the one who loved us and forgave us and set us apart to live a life in his name and to start turning the world right side up again. Do not fear, the angels say over and over again to us, because we are often paralyzed by fear. But then as we watch the story unfold, the fear gives way to courage and strength and faith. And the one who is most unlikely steps out and does the impossible, might even be us. Such is our calling and the promise of the one who calls us. For we, along with those before us and after us, we are and ever shall be the communion of saints. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.